Good morning, YouTube. Um, I'm pretty much getting close to wrapping up sheetrock. There's a few small pieces I need to patch in, and then I need to fix some of my mistakes as well that I've made. But I'm getting kind of tired of it, and just to mix things up a little bit, today I'm going to drill all the holes for the lights, the wafer lights that we have already installed up in the ceiling. And what I need for that is that DeWalt laser I've been using through this whole process. And I mentioned this in an earlier video, I think, but buying that laser was one of the best investments I've made in this whole house building journey. Um, I've used it for everything. Aligning plumbing, electrical work. Um, I'm gonna use it on my mantle in the fireplace and all that, leveling everything off, tile work. Um, it kind of, you can really use it on every task um, in the house building process. But I'm going to use that laser. And if you recall from one of my electrical videos, I believe it was, on the floor I marked little X's where I wanted all my lights to be. And then um, right now I'm just going to go and sweep up the floor a little bit so I can find all those X's. And I'm simply gonna put that laser on the floor and it's gonna project that X onto the ceiling. And then I got a hole saw, a six inch hole saw, is the size I need for my uh, wafer lights that I'm using. And I'm just going to put the uh, center boring drill bit of that hole saw right on the X. And I'm just gonna keep moving my laser along as I go. And in theory, all my lights should be perfectly in a line and it should go pretty quick. And there's gonna be no guessing because I have it all pre-laid out ahead of time. So um, this is the first time I've done that where you, you go and lay everything out. I did all my outlets, switch boxes, lights, everything ahead of time. I wrote it all out on the floor. And then when it came to uh, hanging drywall and cutting out all those boxes, it was a breeze. So a little bit of extra work ahead of time saves you a ton of of hours you know trying to find where everything's at and then uh, if you if you forget where you put something and you're drilling extra holes just to try and find it and you make more work for yourself uh, which ten, which seems to be what I've been doing a lot in here lately is making mistakes and more work for myself but I'll quit rambling here I'll show you the process and I hope it goes as easy as I think it's gonna go so here's my my line one of three. So we got three lines of lights in the living area. And I'm glad I used permanent marker on the floor because even the permanent marker is kind of wearing away just from getting swept and all the sheetrock dust. But I'm gonna follow this line, which goes all the way down to the end of the room. And I can't remember how many lights are in each line. I want to say that it's eight or nine, but it could be more than that. So with the way this laser works, I've got a horizontal on an X, or a vertical on an X in both directions, and I simply line up this X on that mark I made on the floor, and then I can show you what the ceiling looks like, but it's basically projecting that X right up on the ceiling above me, and I'm just going to take this hole saw bit and punch holes right through the sheetrock. Um, just be careful when you're punching holes up and through because there is electrical wire up there and you don't want to go overboard and accidentally hit something. I know on the, the uh, lights that had a wire that could potentially be in the way, I wrote on the floor careful just so that I knew that you can't go up too far or you could potentially hit a light or a, uh, a, an electrical cable. So make sure you take little notes like that along the way because like I mentioned earlier, you don't want to be making more work for yourself, especially at this point in the game. Safety first, kids. All right, guys, so you can faintly see on camera. In real life, it's a lot brighter, but there's that green X on the roof. I'm just going to climb up here and drill that hole out. Behind me at all, 
I've got all those lights, they're lined up perfectly in a row. This worked really, really well. I can't see myself doing it any other way. One small thing that uh, I would note, or if you're ever going to do this method, is the little cord that is attached to the electrical box for these wafer lights that they plug into. Make sure that is tucked up and out of the way. There was one cord that got underneath the stud, in between the stud and the sheetrock, and got pinched. So I couldn't pull it out, so I had to loosen a few screws and then pull it out. Um, but that could have been easily avoided if I would have just tucked all those cords up and away. Um, so if you do do this method, make sure you just curl them up and you won't have any trouble at all. I'll, I'll show you this row and then I'm going to do all the rest of them here in the kitchen living room area. But that probably took me 10 minutes to do all those. Didn't have to measure anything, just went right off the floor. Really, really quick and efficient. There's the first one that I started with, and then just went right down the row. All right guys, I've got the whole living room and kitchen area that kind of swerves over into the entryway as well finished. 30 lights in here guys. Sounds a little overkill, but I think it's gonna look awesome when it's all done. And with these high ceilings and these LEDs are dimmable, so we can turn them down if it's a little too much. But we really like having a ton of bright lights. In our old house, we put a bunch of uh, these LED cans in and we love it. So I can't wait to see this place lit up at night. Uh, we've got a cool chandelier that we're gonna put over the island that I think is really gonna stick out. And I just need to cut out where the ceiling fan in the living area is. And now I'm gonna go over and do all of the bedrooms, but 30 down and about 50 more to go. So I've been getting a lot of questions on Having all these holes in my sheetrock, aren't I gonna lose all of my heat through the roof? And in a, in a standard or a traditional home, I would say you definitely need to put the cones over them and insulate around them. But with the way this is set up, on the ceiling in here, the ceiling in here is like a floating girt system that's essentially attached to the rafters with these little hangers that allow for wood movement. And then they put a plastic barrier up uh, in between those two layers. So above all of my lights, there's plastic, a vapor barrier, and then there's blown in insulation on top of that. So in theory, I shouldn't lose any heat up through the holes where my wafer lights are. Versus in like our old house, we put the can lights in, and I know for a fact I'm losing heat around those lights because those are not rated for direct contact with insulation and you have to get these specific cones to put over them and foam around them and it's a huge pain in the butt. I'm gonna go in the garage to kind of show you a better idea of how this is all laid out. So in here you can really see, my camera will focus there. So we have all of these horizontal girts that are attached below the rafters, okay? And then we've got this plastic vapor barrier that covers everything, the walls and the ceiling. And on top of that, we've got all our blown insulation. So essentially, I'm able to attach my drywall, punch in through the drywall without breaking through that vapor barrier. So in theory, I shouldn't lose any heat out of the holes where all of these wafer lights are placed. This house is really designed to be extremely efficient, which I know everybody hopes to do with the home, but I can't think of a much better way to hold in heat or hold in the cool air, then have everything wrapped in plastic. Spray foam would be another uh, way to do that, a little bit more expensive, but that also would help, would, would have spray foam up in your attic as well as on the walls. This is kind of a similar concept to that. As everything is sealed, everything has a air and vapor barrier with all this plastic around it, and then the insulation is on top or behind all of it. So I'm gonna quit blabbing here. I do appreciate everybody that's subscribed and that's been uh, liking and following along with this build series and uh, as well as following along with some of my woodworking videos that I've placed out here. We did hit the 500 subscriber mark, which is an awesome goal for me. Uh, the next step is to get to that 1000 mark, um, which my goal is to hit that before summer, um, before winter's up, but that's a tall task, I guess, in the world of YouTube. But I do want to thank everybody that has subscribed. It means a lot to me and my family. And I hope my content has been able to help somebody out there 
whether you're planning on building a house or it's just you know on the back burner maybe someday i'll build a house uh, i hope there's something throughout all these videos that is useful to you and that gives you some insight on uh, some good ways or some things to avoid while building thanks a lot for subscribing and we'll see you on the next build